Hey everyone, welcome to Gadgets with German. Today we have a really cool product. This is the Ring Doorbell and you can see it on the screen behind me. Why I'm so excited about this? Well, this is a new version of something I actually uh, use myself at my place. I think it's a great product, extra security. And let's, let's dive right in. Let's zoom in and take a look at the product here. And you can see it's about the size of an iPhone overall and its thickness is about the size of a couple of decks of cards like an old school iPod and what you can do with this is it has a chargeable battery so and let's zoom back out here so if you don't have a a existing doorbell a hardwired doorbell you can just use the tools that this comes with and this comes with all the tools in the book it comes like with a whole toolkit screws a screwdriver all sorts of stuff in order to connect it you know to the side of your door or wherever you want to put it and you basically just you know install it you hook it up to the iPhone app and it's it's a really cool product if you don't have a doorbell or if you want to digitize your current doorbell you can just replace it now this is the successor to the original ring that came out a few years ago they have all sorts of different products in their lineup but this is their newest one the ring video tour doorbell just came out in the last couple of weeks we finally got one here and over the previous version, it has some really exciting enhancements that are really important to someone like me who's been using the first version, making it a worthwhile upgrade for me. It has 1080p video recording, which is new over 720p, which is obviously very important for these types of purposes. You're trying to record something, getting the best video re resolution is very important. It also has a new replaceable rechargeable battery like old school phones, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but that really helps with the battery life situation if you're not replacing a hardwired doorbell. And so I think that, and my takeaway is, if you're looking for a digital modern doorbell for under a couple hundred dollars, this at $199 is a great get. And if you have the original doorbell, the original ring doorbell, and you're looking for higher resolution video recording, but if you're also looking for something that lasts a little bit longer because of the replaceable battery and you don't have a hardwire setup, this is a really nice upgrade. So I think that it's, it's really worth the price. Now they're still selling the original ring for $179, and at $199, I think the replaceable battery and the 1080p video recording is a worthwhile upgrade. Now I want to show you something and let's zoom back in here. So on the back of here there's these two ports and what this allows you to do is sort of unscrew your current doorbell that you have whatever came with your house, your apartment, your condo, your whatnot and plug those into the back here and this supports a whole list of different uh, setups and you can plug those two things in there and you have a hard wire set up to this doorbell adding video recording functionality and all sorts of stuff all the benefits that we'll get into so if you want to replace your old school doorbell you can do that and it feeds power into there as well so you don't have to worry about that but if you're coming from the old one maybe for twenty dollars if you're considering between the two going from 720p to 1080p is worth it now let's zoom back out here uh, and take a, a deeper look about how this device works so let me explain the premise here you hook this up, and right now with a, a normal doorbell, you, someone comes to your door, they click the doorbell, and then you have to go up to your door, you look through the little hole, and you can see you know, who's there, or they can call you and whatnot. But this actually has a video camera in there, and you can see in the screen behind me. Now this 1080p video camera basically will send a notification to your phone right and it will ring like a phone call but you get like a normal text message like notification you open up the notification and you can actually hold a video conference one way but two way on audio with them so I want to give a quick demo about how that works so I'm gonna open up the app here and let's just you know click the doorbell and because this is battery powered I don't have to have it attached to show you we don't have a door here to hook it up to but basically someone just clicks the doorbell and it will ring it'll make the normal chime and then on the phone here you can see a preview of who it is and you can click the two buttons so you have the red and green buttons there and you can just answer the call and you can you know talk to the person maybe it's someone delivering a package uh, someone at your door you want to see who there is, they are and let's uh, let's turn that off here we'll end the call and basically you just hold a conversation with them and you can decide if you want to let them in you can tell them where to leave a package if someone is you know casing your place you can see that too because it records everything so there's a lot to like here with this doorbell system and obviously uh, it shows the, the chime so you know it's working. Now something interesting to note is that you get the notification to your phone. There's also an iPad app and obviously apps for you know Android and whatnot. And now it'll send that notification, you open the notification, you have that conversation. But if you want to sort of have an extra speaker to be able to hear a little bit better, 
In my place, I use their $30 adapter. It's like a speaker you can put into any of your outlets and you can hear it there. So let's say your phone is charging in your room and you want to still be able to know that someone's at your door. You buy one of these things for $30. I'm sure there's people who buy, you know, depending how big their place is, several of them so you can hear it just like a normal chime system. Now, this is really great if you don't have an existing hardwired doorbell chime in your house. If you have one of those, it's compatible with that too. But what this device offers versus some of the other doorbells, even from Ring, is that this is fully compatible whether you have a built-in doorbell system or whether you don't have a built-in doorbell system. And I think for $200, what you're getting here is basically a two-in-one security camera and a doorbell, which I think is it's a really compelling option. And we have a bunch of questions coming in here. Now, the first question we have is, if you have multiple doors, do you need to buy one for each door? Yes, that's a good question. So if you have a door to the back of your house, one to the front of your house, you're gonna want two separate cameras, one for each door, and you're gonna want to set it up in the iPhone app. Now, it's, let me actually show you this because that's a good question. So you go into the app, and in the app, you can actually see, and we'll take a look here, you can see a list of all of your devices. So I have one at my front door, I have one for the office, which is this one that we're testing, and also we have the, the Chime, which is that $30 adapter, to, you can set it up from there. You can also set up a new device from there. So it's a really clean interface if you're trying to switch between the, the multiple cameras you might have around your home. You can name them all. It sets up pretty quickly uh, over Wi-Fi. And an, another question coming in here is, do you need a Wi-Fi connection to be the same on both devices to view it? The answer is no. You can be in Australia with your phone, and you can get a live tune in view to what your camera is uh, looking at in California for example. Another question coming in here, does it have facial recognition? It does not have facial recognition. So we showed the Nest Cam IQ uh, last week on this show that it's $300 that does have facial recognition. What this does is it can tell if there are things in motion, anything. It can't specify between a person or not a person. The Ring Pro, someone else is asking what's the difference between that, uh, the Ring Pro and this. The Ring Pro does have that functionality to differentiate between a person and let's say a package or you know a, a cat or a dog or another animal uh, running through. So more information uh, about this, we want, I want to emphasize, I've been using this for a while in my home, not this particular version, this one just came out, but for about four or five months, the old version. Something I noticed is that if you don't have a really good Wi-Fi router, the connection is going to drop. It's going to take a while for the calls to start. But I upgraded my router recently. It's a bit faster now, and I haven't had problems since. So if you're going to want to use one of these video streaming devices, and especially now that we're moving from 720p to 1080p here, you're going to want to make sure your Wi-Fi internet connection is pretty solid in order to take full advantage of it. Another question coming in here, is there a monthly charge, or is it a one-time fee? To buy the product, obviously, it's a one-time fee, $200. But what they're doing here, and all the security camera companies with these cloud-based services are doing the, this these days, is you're going to have to pay for cloud storage. So it comes with a 30-day free trial, all the devices do, and that allows you basically unlimited storage for viewing for several months in order to store the video there and watch it later. And of course, for a normal doorbell-like experience, you don't need video recording, right? If you want to be able to sort of take a look at who's at your door and basically know if you should let them in or not let them in, this works really well. You don't need storage. But storage is very important if you're going on a vacation or on a trip or something and you want to record everything that's going on in front of your house in order if something happens, someone tries to break in, someone steals a package, someone is casing your place, you're going to want that cloud storage. And luckily, it's a little bit less expensive. Uh, than the cloud storage prices for the Nest Cloud that we talked about with the Nest IQ last week. So like we said with the Nest, it's $100 or $300 per year, depending on how much storage you want, how long you want to store it, and how many cameras you have. But the cloud storage prices for the, the, the Ring 2 are a little bit cheaper. So it's $30 per year if you have one camera, so a couple dollars a month. And if you have multiple cameras, even if it's four or five cameras, not just one or two, it's $100 uh, a year and it's a unlimited storage or as much storage as you need. And if something happens, you can look it up on the phone, you can watch it. And it actually has a little like news feed type of feed here on the app. So if it senses motion, it'll notify you if you want and it will track it all. And you can jump right into what the motion is. 
right? So it can tell you, oh, something happened at 10.32 a.m. You can jump there and see what it was, whether someone was trying to break in or if someone was just walking by. And if you have that subscription or the first 30-day 30, 30 free trial, it's there for you to look at. So I think it's really compelling to have both things in here. This digital video doorbell where you can hold that two-way audio conversation with who's ever at your door and see them, but also that extra security in mind to see what's going on in front of your house or anywhere where one of these uh, cameras are present. Another good question coming in here, can you alert the police directly from the app? That's a good question. I haven't seen anything to do with that where you can alert the police, but obviously if you notice something, you'll want to uh, store that video file and you can easily export it with the share menu on a, any really smartphone or tablet take it to your computer, use it as evidence, upload it to whatever you need to upload it when you file that police report, or if you want to show a police officer in person, you can show it to them on the phone, you can text messages it, whatever, it makes it really simple to share it. But something I did notice in the app that is actually very interesting, it uses your location, obviously it stores your location in the app for a very important reason other than knowing which camera is which it can actually tell you what else is going on in your neighborhood. So I noticed in my neighborhood, there's a lot of other people that use ring doorbells, right? And what you can do is if you notice something suspicious, you notice there is a, a person who might be frequently stealing packages, an area where there is crimes or casing the place, you can actually upload that video within the Ring app to a feed so you can let other people in your neighborhood know, hey, you should look out for this. And what's really cool is down the road, if there's you know a string of different robberies or bad things happening in your neighborhood, all those people can come together with those video clips, send that all to the police, so the police will have an easier time catching that person because you have camera feeds coming from multiple places and multiple houses, so maybe at some point they'll be able to get, uh, get a good look at the person who keeps coming up on that film. So I think that's a really compelling thing, sort of triangulating uh, issues happening in your neighborhood, people with the Ring devices working together. Of course, it's private. It doesn't show your address to the other Ring users. It basically just shows the, the video recording, and you have to opt into this. So you choose to share which clips, and if you don't want to share it, you don't want to sort of work as a team in your neighborhood together, uh, you don't have to share it. Now, the 1080p video recording is actually a big help. I noticed the video recordings that I had stored on the 720p version, not as high quality as the 1080p video recordings. And obviously, the higher resolution, the better. Now, there's some people asking, how does that compare to the video recording on a Nest IQ camera? Well, as we know, that camera records 4K video, but it only records 4K for zooming purposes. So the higher quality of the video, the higher resolution, the easier it is to zoom in and take a look at what you're looking at. But the video quality actually downscales to 1080p. So from that perspective, the video quality on the Ring camera and on the Nest camera is pretty much exactly the same. Now another question coming in here, and this leads us to my pro tip here, is has motion detection in the Ring Doorbell 2 gotten better? Well, the motion detection technology is pretty much the same on the Ring 1 to the Ring 2. You can't decipher between a person or a package or whatnot, just general motion. But what they have done here is they've expanded the field of view. So on the 720p original version from a couple years ago, the field of view that the camera can capture is 160 degrees. This one is differentiating by capturing a whole 180 degrees. It's a small change, but if you're watching back on an old video and you see, mm, if it was just a couple more feet or a couple more inches, I would have seen whatever is going on here, this would, would fix that. Of course, you would have to record it with this new one. But that does take us to the pro tip, motion zones. So it doesn't just capture motion randomly unless you want it to. But what it can do is it can capture motion in specific places in front of the camera. So I want to show you this on the phone. We'll dive in here a little bit. And you can go to the motion sensing tab here. And you can see on the screen behind me, right, you can set different zones, smart alerts, motion scheduling. So I want to kind of walk through here so you can, can see and I can show you here. And let's move this away and take a look here. So on the motion zones, you can you know, select up to five or six different zones and the different range. So you can select how many feet out, right? Do you want this to only alert you if something happens within five feet of the phone or of the camera? Do you want something to alert you within 10 feet? Do you want it to be in the middle, on the sides, in this zone? Do you want to cover everything? So having that customization in order to only receive alerts and be notified and have recordings based on these specific zones of motion being captured is very important. And it's a really cool feature. It's a really nice differentiator to really be able to determine what kind of alerts you want. And the camera, because of the updated depth of field, it can go 30 feet out reliably to capture motion. So I think that's a really cool feature. And if you're considering one of these, it should be really important. And one of the first things you do during setup is to 
show which kind of motion you're going to want to capture. And another thing you could do is scheduled motion. So you can determine uh, different rules. So you can say, hmm, only alert me on certain times of the day or certain days when there's going to be motion. If you know there's someone coming you know, at, these, at this period of time on Monday through Wednesday, you might want to disable motion alerts for that period in order to not get unnecessary alerts because you already know uh, what's going on. And let, let's zoom back out here and uh, take a, a closer look and answer some more questions here. So can you speak directly to the person ringing your doorbell, even if you're in another state or country? Yeah, that's a very good question. So if someone clicks the doorbell, and let's come back here and show you. If someone clicks that, right, I'll, I'll ring it just so you can hear the chime again. And it's a, it's a loud chime you can't miss. And obviously, it comes in up here. So it doesn't matter if I'm in Australia, if I'm in Canada, Antarctica. If I have a Wi-Fi connection, and this thing is installed, and it's connected to Wi-Fi in my home, I can have a conversation with that person. It's an audio conversation, right? Because there's no video. It's not a two-way. There's no screen. But you can hear each other. You can talk to each other. If you want to tell someone to leave a package, you can tell them to leave a package and whatnot. It, it works really well. I, I use it frequently. Uh, another question coming in here. My current ring cameras really fail if someone isn't at the door long enough for the motion detection to turn on. So often, we see the back of someone leaving our property. Does the Ring 2 offer improvements here in the lag? That's a good question. I haven't seen improvements from that perspective. I haven't had uh, that issue myself. I think it ha probably has to do with you know, the depth of how far a, you know, a person might be from the camera, what the situation is going on there. But they did say there are some motion uh, depth of field improvements on the camera there. So over time, you probably might see uh, some improvements. Now, another question coming in here, what's the Wi-Fi range for this? I almost got one, but I need it to be placed around 120 feet uh, from the router. You know, that's a very good question. I think it really has to do with uh, just general Wi-Fi. So if your router is going to work from a phone 120 feet away, it's going to work with this as well. It's just standard Wi-Fi protocols. I didn't notice any Wi-Fi improvements over the first version to the second version. So if you had that problem with the first one, you might want to get a new router. I did that because I was having problems with my first one but I haven't seen that issue come to the second one. So it's really on a person-by-person -person basis. If you need to upgrade your Wi-Fi at home, you probably want to do that, but I haven't seen any Wi-Fi improvements to answer your question from the first one to the second one. Now, another question I've been getting a lot on Twitter, and please feel free to send your questions before the episode and, and whatnot during the episode on these products, is what about HomeKit support? I know a lot of you really like Apple products, you use the HomeKit app, and Ring has been promising HomeKit support for their products for the last couple of years, but it hasn't shown up yet. I remember there was even a period of time when the Ring camera was featured on Apple's HomeKit website as a device that works with the HomeKit app. And for those unfamiliar, HomeKit is an app on your phone that works with this protocol that allows you to easily set up smart home devices. It works with thermostats, it works with lights, locks, and of course security cameras to be able to get that video feed inside your HomeKit app and use it for easy setup. So I talked to uh, Ring before this episode and they said you know, they're still on track to deliver HomeKit support as early as this year. That's the good news, but the bad news is that they haven't said anything about HomeKit support for the Ring 2 or the Ring 1. All the HomeKit support that they've told me about and that they discussed online on their Twitter support page has to do with that Ring Pro. In the end, I don't know how useful HomeKit support really is for a device like this because it's very unlikely that the Apple HomeKit app would be able to allow you to set up the motion zones, uh, the video storage, and all those recordings. That's really a basic functionality that they offer in the HomeKit app. So I feel like even if it does have HomeKit support, you would want to use the Ring app anyways to store the video file, share them, look at the news feed, differentiate between your cameras. But of course, being able to set it up like you can set up your Schlage locks and your other devices through HomeKit would be a nice touch. And I feel like it would probably spur a few more buys from people who really want to have everything in that HomeKit main app repository. Now, the biggest feature, in my opinion, the absolute best feature of this new ring, I've been asking for this for a long time, is the removable, replaceable battery. So let me give you some background here. The motion, especially if you live in an apartment complex like me, it really can drain the battery quickly. So I've noticed that every couple of weeks with the original 720p ring, I would have to take a screwdriver, unscrew the ring off the side of my doorpost, right? Bring it into the house and then hook up the USB cable to charge it for a couple hours and then screw it back on there. And there would be times where, hey, I wouldn't even want to put it back on there because I would have to sort of schlep it from outside the home into inside the home, charge it like a phone. It was really you know, an unnecessary process, maybe the ultimate first world problem. But this new one fixes that. 
Now, let's take a look here. Let's zoom in here. And you can see on the bottom, there's this battery case, right? This top here can actually slide right off. You slide it off and try to open it here. You slide it off and you can actually pop the battery out, right? So what you can do is you just click this thing right here, slide the battery out, and then it has a USB charger on this. So all you have to do is take this out of your ring, bring it into your home, charge it, and then you can just slide it back in and put the top back on. Now, if we're already here, I want to show you that the top parts are actually replaceable. So we have the classic silver one here, and you can just you know slap that on. And let's zoom back out here and sort of go back to the original design. So I actually particularly like the black one, uh, but the silver one here for people who like the original color is there too. And I have to say, the battery being able to come in and out so easily, especially for your environment where the battery life dies pretty quickly, it's an amazing upgrade, right? That alone makes it worth the upgrade for me at least because it actually will increase the security in your home because of all the times where you don't want to you know, replace the battery because it's so difficult to unscrew it and screw it back. Being able to just pop the top off, take the battery out, charge that, and pop that back in makes things really easy and simplifies things a lot. And I have to say, another thing you can do is you can have multiple battery packs, sort of like there's people who have multiple battery packs for phones with replaceable batteries. Keep one on your desk or whatever, and when it's time, you can just swap them out and charge that one. So you could be at a point where you never need to not have this thing recording. And this is, of course, important if you are in a place where you don't have a hardwired, powered uh, doorbell system ready in place. This is if you're bringing a doorbell brand new to a place that doesn't have a doorbell. Uh, another question coming in here, any word on if they'll push some of these improvements via software updates instead of needing to buy a whole new device? You know, that's a good question. When I asked them about HomeKit support eventually coming to this product, they didn't rule out support coming in a software update, but they didn't say that it wouldn't require a new one either. Obviously, 1080p requires a new sensor, and this battery system requires, obviously, a whole new architecture of the product to be able to pop in and out, so that's why they had to upgrade it. But given that you know the whole ecosystem, the Internet of Things ecosystem, all syncs together and everything gets software updates these days, I would not be surprised if we see more improvements coming to this product with software updates. Overall, I think the Ring 2 is a great upgrade for someone who's really having battery life problems or video quality problems with the first one. And if you're looking for a new digital doorbell for your home at a good solid price, $200, even if you don't have an existing doorbell or if you already have a doorbell system you want to replace, the Ring 2 should definitely be given some consideration. Thank you so much. This was, was, this was Gadgets with Gurman, and we'll see you next week.